Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Exercise for Fat Loss Over 40 workshop. I am thrilled that you are here, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. I want to respect your time, so we are going to jump right into our discussion in about 30 seconds, but first I want to go down into the chat and see where is everyone joining us from. So drop if you haven't already and tell us where are you from? Baton Rouge, Chesapeake, Virginia, Maine, Iowa, where was everyone else from? We've got Connecticut, Vancouver Island, Canada, Richmond, Virginia, Pittsburgh, Toronto, Canada. Nice, all over. Well, I am thrilled that you are here with me today. Today in our workshop, you are going to make the ultimate shift from feeling frustrated by your lack of results in the gym to being crystal clear on how to shed pounds, inches, and sizes, build beautiful muscle, and feel really confident in your skin. By the end of our time together here today, you're going to know the one main driver of fat loss, the four core training priorities that will transform your body, and most importantly, how you can implement these training principles into your own unique life to see incredible results for yourself. Now, if you love what you're hearing here today and you stay with me to the end, I'm going to show you how you can get your hands on this fast action bonus, which is frankly something I have literally never offered before as a bonus in my life. I'm going to be offering live one-on-one -on -one personal training sessions with me via Zoom. This will be just you and me. I'm going to tell you how you can get your hands on that at the end of today's webinar. Now, for the next 60 minutes, I really want this whole hour to be just about you. So let's try and get rid of all distractions you might have. Shut the door to the room you're in, turn off your phone, and shut down any other windows you might have open. Now, I don't know exactly why you showed up here today, but I have a guess that it could be one of these three. Perhaps you work out four or five times per week and you are not happy. You are ticked off that you do not look like you work out yet. You want a clear answer. What is missing? Or maybe this is more like you. You've actually never been able to stick with exercise long enough to see results. You jump from program to program and you want to know what works and how do I get the motivation to stick with it? Or maybe this one feels more like you. You're committing to exercising for the first time or for the first time in a long time, and you want to feel confident that you're doing the right things. Drop into the chat and give me a one, a two, or a three. Which one of those resonates most with you? One, you want a clear answer about what's missing. Why aren't you seeing results? Two, give me a two. If you know what works, if you want to know what works and you need motivation to stick with it, or three, you're new to exercise and you want to be confident you're doing the right thing. Which one of those feels most like you? Jump into this chat. I can't really, there we go. Let's see. We've got ones, ones, and twos. Lots of ones and twos. All right. Lots of ones, lots of twos. Well, I want you to know whatever your motivation in showing up here today, I fully support you. Now, you may have come here today knowing little to nothing about me, and if that's the case, I want to take just about 10 or 15 seconds to tell you a bit about me. My name is Kim. I'm a personal trainer and nutrition coach. I have two really cute doggies who hopefully we will not hear from during the next hour. <laughs> hopefully Rocky and Lily will be nice and quiet. My husband, Brian, and I live in the suburbs of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We have three wonderful children. Our baby is about ready to go off and make us empty nesters in the fall heading off to college. This over here on the right is me at age 45. When I started powerlifting, I had never identified as an athlete a day in my life until I was 45 years old. I love how I feel when I lift heavy weights. Now, I also want you to know that the things that I'm going to share with you here today are not just things that I know from a professional level, level, but I also know these from a really personal level. This on the left here is me in my mid to late 30s. I struggled with obesity. I had three kids. Every time I got pregnant, I gained 50 pounds and I never fully lost it. And so I really struggled with my weight. This is me. When I, right when I turned 50, so just about three years ago, I'm 53 now. This really is me on the left. People are like, I don't believe you. I promise that is me. I know these things from a very personal level. What I really want you to know is that I have coached more than 600 women over the age of 40 to lose weight and get in the best shape of their lives. We are free from stress about the number on the scale and confident in our ability to use exercise as a tool to become the best versions of ourselves. 
Can you imagine what it would feel like to wake up and be relaxed about the number on the scale, to feel confident about what you're going to do for exercise, and to be able to look in the mirror and like what you see? Getting in shape after 40 is simpler than it's made out to be. Not easy, but simple. And the secrets to success are all accessible to you. Now, if you're anything like me, you like to know what the plan is at all times, so I'm going to tell you what it is we're going to be doing here together today. Before I jump into that, I do want to let those of you who are watching me live right now know that my assistant coach, Andrea, is here. She is manning the chat, so she's going to drop into the chat the link for you to get the bonus for showing up here live during our call. So those exercise snack workouts, so 17 exercise snack workouts and an explanation about what the heck is an exercise snack, that's a bonus that's going to be available to you. She's going to put it in the chat right now. You can download that and save it for later. Okay, where are we heading here today? The first thing we're going to do is talk about the main driver of fat loss. Then we're going to tackle the role of exercise in fat loss specifically and those core four training priorities. What are they? What should you be doing in the gym? And then we're gonna talk about how is training different for women over 40. And if you like what you're hearing here today and you're like, how can you help me to actually do these things? I'm gonna tell you how you can work with me to implement the things you learned here today. Then I'm gonna tell you how you can get your hands on that fast action bonus I mentioned. And then we're gonna do a live Q&A. You can literally ask me any question. I will stay till every question has been answered. Nutrition, exercise, fat loss, midlife fitness, anything you want, ask me those questions. Now, you and I both know very well, if you try and hold your questions in your brain until you get to the end, you're probably going to have nothing there. <laughs> That's the way I would be. So go ahead and any question that pops into your mind, type it right into the chat. Andrea is going to be gathering those for me and shooting them to me in a Google Doc. So I'll be able to answer those questions for you. So any question you have as well, as we're talking, drop it into the chat. I got you covered. All right, are you ready? Let's hit it. We're gonna start by talking about the main driver of fat loss. Now for this part of our chat, I'm actually going to stop screen sharing and, oops. It just said I was muted. I wanna make sure you guys have been able to hear me this whole time. You have been able to hear me, correct? Yeah, there's no way you, you all let me get this far without telling me you couldn't hear me. All right, can you guys let me know can you hear me now? Because this just gave me a message saying that I'm muted, which I don't believe I am. I think I think they're being silly. All right. I am going to spin my way over here. I want to show you this scale. This right here is going to be representing the calories in, calories out equation. Probably something you've heard a lot about. We're going to be talking about the energy balance equation, and I want you to get a really good picture in your mind of what that that's like. Okay, so over here, this is calories out, and this is calories in. Now, your body needs calories, energy, just to keep itself alive. If you were laying in your bed today doing absolutely nothing, which sounds amazing, right? You would need a lot of calories to just keep yourself alive. This is called our basal metabolic rate. All the functions of your body that you just don't even think about. So things like your brain functioning, that takes energy. Things like your heart pumping, your all of your vital organs working. Are you blinking? Are you breathing? All of those things take energy, calories to function. And you can see this is almost all the way full our basal metabolic rate, just those things to keep our body functioning, uses up most of the energy that we use in a day. It's 60 to 70% of those calories just to keep us alive. Now, did you also know that in order to digest the food you eat, it takes energy, calories. And so another piece of our, the energy out part of the equation is those calories it takes to digest our food. This is called the thermic effect of food. And it's about 10% of the energy that you use in a day. So let's put that in here. Now, what's left, this little bit left, is actually your activity. And that might come as a surprise to you because you might be thinking like, wait a minute, when I think calories out, energy out, I think like exercise. Interestingly, our exercise is the smallest part of our total daily energy expenditure. It's like about 5%. 
And the rest of that activity is just the activity we do in daily life. Like things like I got up and pet my dog, I dried my hair, I walked to the car, things even like fidgeting. You know, part of this is genetic. Some people are just wired to be more fidgety than others. My husband is one. He fidgets all the time. He's always bouncing his knee and pacing around. I twirl my hair a lot. Some people fidget more, and that's part of this um, activity factor that isn't exercise. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. It comes into play. So this is all of our calories out, our energy out. Are you with me? All right. Now, what about this other side? What about the calories in part? Well, that's the food and drink we eat, anything we eat throughout the day. So our breakfast, our lunch, our dinner, all of our liquid beverages, you know, alcohol, juice, sodas, any of those things, coffee, all of those. And of course, our little snickety snacks throughout the day. Now, if these two sides, calories out and calories in are the same, that is weight maintenance. And that's where we are here. This is weight maintenance. The energy we're taking in is equal to the energy we're putting out in all of those different ways. This is across time, not any one day, but across many weeks and months. This is what weight maintenance looks like. With that said, what then creates weight loss? How do we lose fat? Well, there are options and I bet you can see them right now. You're like, wait a minute. Hmm, I think there's more than one way. You would be right. So one of the ways to have calories out be more than calories in would be to eat less, right? We could literally just eat less at breakfast, lunch and dinner. We could have fewer snacks. We could cut out some of our liquid calories. So if we ate less, we brought less calories in, that would result in this calorie deficit, this energy deficit. So that's one option. Let's bring us back to baseline here. We're at weight maintenance. The other option here, we could increase this energy in. And most of the time when people try to do that, what do they do? They're not like, how do I increase my basal metabolic rate? And in fact, people will often talk about like, how do I increase my metabolism? I'm going to tell you, there's not a whole lot you can do. One of the best things you can do is gain weight because then, then it's bigger, then it's higher. But one of the first things people think to do is like, I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to exercise more. And would that work? In theory, yes. Yes, it would. Now, I want to talk about why that's not the most effective approach. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So let me come back here. And let me share this screen again. Let's find screen sharing. Here we go. All right, I want to talk with you. We're gonna start with a little story. So this is me here in the middle, the one without the smiley face. This is me again in my thirties. I have lost some of that weight that you saw in the other picture. I was, I gained and lost weight all the time in my thirties. And I often brought my friends along with me. This tall gal here, Kelly, uh, she joined me in multiple of my ideas for how we were gonna lose weight. We did Weight Watchers together. We did Metafast together. And one day I called her up and I'm like, Kelly, I just read something in this woman's magazine. I got a lot of my really bad weight loss ideas from women's magazines, ladies. I read an article about how this woman had trained to walk a marathon and she lost all kinds of weight. And I'm like, oh, I like to walk. We can do this. So I'm like, do you want to meet me? I've got this idea. And when I tell you where we met, to have our little chat about our next weight loss pursuit idea, I think you're gonna get a hint about what direction this went. We met at our favorite ice cream parlor. <laughs> and over a nice big ice cream Sunday, I explained to Kelly about how this woman had trained all these months and lost all this weight and should we walk a marathon together? And she's like, I am in. And not only was Kelly in, but three of our other friends also joined us in this pursuit to lose weight via walking a marathon. So we signed up in the spring for the Baltimore Marathon in the fall. And we trained all summer. And what this training looked like were long training walks during the week that we did on our own. So every day, Monday through Friday, we would go on a long walk alone. And then on the weekends, a Saturday, we would get together and we would take a very, very long, fast walk. These walks got up to five 
hours long on Saturday. So we'd be walking an hour or two every day. And then on Saturdays, we started with two hours, three hours, four, up to five hours. So we are walking a ton. This picture here, when I crossed the finish line, I was very discouraged to see. I crossed that finish line at the exact same weight as when Kelly and I sat down in that ice cream shop. And if you're like, wait, didn't you just say you added on like 10, 12, 15 hours a week of exercise? Yes. Yes, I did. And I didn't lose a single pound. And this is not unique to me. This is very common. Why does this happen? Let's talk about why just increasing exercise energy expenditure is not the most successful strategy for fat loss. We're gonna talk about four here. First, your body is really good at adapting. That's how you build fitness. It gets better at doing the work. So over time, you need to do more to get the same results. So at some point, the deficit you create with X hours of cardio will become maintenance. You will need to do longer or more intense or both You will to, in order to create that same deficit. So your body adapts. That's one reason. Another reason why just increasing exercise energy expenditure is not the most successful strategy for fat loss is that right here, right on my list. I love this thing to track my steps. I love it for even heart rate. It is not good at telling us calories burned. We look at them and we look at the treadmill number, but studies show that even the most accurate trackers are off by over 27%. And the least accurate were off by over 97%. So they are overestimating. So we think we're burning a certain amount of calories and we're burning considerably less. And yes, this does include your Apple Watch. So that's the second reason this doesn't work so well. The third reason why just increasing energy, exercise energy expenditure is not the most successful strategy for fat loss is it is insanely easy to eat back calories burned super fast, like super fast. Now, I am going to, this is something I don't usually do. I do not usually eat on camera, but ladies, while we chat here, I'm going to, I'm going to set my little timer here. I'm going to set my little timer to start. It's a little stopwatch. I'm going to have myself a little snack. And I'm going to do it by covering my mouth so you all don't have to watch me chew. I want you to drop into the chat. How long do you think it would take to eat 500 calories? Now, you're going to have to number these. Give me a number one and tell me how long you think it would take you to eat 500 calories. And then give me a number two. How long do you think it would take you to exercise off 500 calories? I'm going to chew while you do that. Now, this idea that you can eat back super fast the calories you burn is one of the main things I got wrong with that marathon thing. Do you know what I did every Saturday after we were training? We would come back from our long training walk and my friends and I would go to our favorite diner called the G Lodge and I would order cream cheese stuffed French toast. You wanna know how many calories are in cream cheese stuffed French toast? Almost a thousand. Now, So Shannon says, how long do you think it would take to eat 500 calories? She says, five minutes. Joan says, five five minutes. For number two, Joan says, how long do you think it would take to exercise off 500 calories? 90 minutes. Annie says, number one, 45 seconds. Two, one hour. Delinda, two minutes to eat 500, two and a half hours to burn off. Shannon says, two hours to burn off. Yeah, you guys are spot on here. You're spot on. I want to show you this. I'm going to keep snacking on my donut too. This is my treadmill. Now, I've started running. This was one Saturday in February when I ran for an hour. You can see I burned 266 calories. You see how that's, that's circled? I was walking three and a half miles. Did it for what, three and a half miles per hour for one hour. And if you're like, who's walking that slow? That's me running. And you're like, that's really slow. Let's just pretend. 
Plus per pound, I went twice as fast, guys. That'd be seven miles per hour. So 266 calories, let's double it. Let's say I ran faster and I burned 532 calories. Whole hour of running, 532 calories. Remember the, what you just learned about that calories burned number being inflated? It's not even gonna be that. It's gonna be less, like 27% less minimum, but let's just give it to him. Let's just say it's 532 calories. Look, I'm almost done my first donut. You guys know how many calories is in a Dunkin' Donut? This is Dunkin' Donuts. That's not the best donut in the world, right? I feel very nostalgic eating them. It makes me think of my childhood. So, can you see my timer? It's been three minutes and 22 seconds. Guess what? I got two bites left in my first donut. I don't think you guys need me to eat the second donut to prove this point. Let me know. Do I need to eat the second donut? Should I stop eating? 1.9 of these. 1.9 of these is 532 calories. 1.9 donuts, 532 calories. I've eaten one of them in three minutes and 53 seconds. Do you see how ineffective the idea of, I'm just gonna exercise off what I eat. It numerically doesn't work well if we're only paying attention to the exercise. Because if we're not paying attention to what's going in, it goes fast. I'm checking the chat just to make sure nobody's like, you've got to keep eating them. Oh, good. Everyone says stop. Awesome. Guys, I really had intended to eat two of these. I practiced it the other day. And I was like, I don't usually eat that fast. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. I'm going to stop. You get the point. It was like three, what did I say? Three, it was less than four minutes to eat a donut. And that donut... If I did another four minutes, that's eight minutes. I'd have to run at seven miles per hour for the re for another hour to burn that off. It's just ineffective. And now the fourth reason, and I think this is perhaps the most important reason, ladies. Even if you're like, I can make this math work. I have all the time in the world. I'm just going to run all day. Even if you can make the math work, this fourth reason is one of the most important reasons why just increasing exercise energy expenditure is not the most successful strategy for fat loss. And that is this, it can create a very negative relationship between you and exercise, where you feel the need to earn your food or burn off the food you just ate. Does this sound familiar to me? Drop into the chat, give me a one, a two or a three. Number one, have you ever thought to yourself or even said out loud, I need to go burn off that meal. I need to go burn off that donut. Or number two, if I'm going out to eat pizza tonight, I'm going out to have cake tonight, I've got to get a good workout in today. You ever thought that? Or maybe both, one and two? Drop it in the chat and let me know. Who's thought that or said that? Yeah, and I'm getting lots of threes, lots of threes, lots of threes, yeah. And this is one of the things that happens when we tie exercise to burning calories. This is the number one biggest mistake I see women making. They relate exercise to burning calories. They try to create their fat loss, their deficit with exercise. And it is a big mistake for all of those reasons I just said. Exercise has so many functions outside of fat loss anyway. And if you're like, yeah, but I just want fat loss. I know it makes me healthy, Kim, but I'm not interested in that. That's fine. I'm not here to judge you for that. But let's see what exercise can actually do for you outside of burning calories. Because what we talked about here, when I showed you the scale, the way to create your deficit is going to be with your nutrition. And if that's the case, you might be like, well, then why the heck am I exercising for fat loss? What does exercise even do for fat loss? Exercise plays at least three very important roles in fat loss. Perhaps the most important one is number one. And that is it spares your muscle in a deficit. When you are eating in a calorie deficit, so you're eating fewer calories than you're burning. Your body is literally breaking down its own tissue to fuel itself. The tissue we want it to break down is your fat. We do not want it breaking down your muscle. Why? 
Your muscle is so important, is absolutely critical for multiple reasons. Muscle is important for your metabolic health. When you have more muscle, you have improved insulin sensitivity. So if you're worried about prediabetes, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, all of these things, insulin resistance, if you have more muscle, you have improved insulin sensitivity. So you do not want to lose your muscle. In fact, you want to build more. It's also critical for healthy and independent aging. You might not know this. If you've been following me for a while, you're probably like Kim, I've heard you say this 90 million times. We lose three to 8% of our muscle mass every decade after the age of 30, if we do nothing about it. So there is something we can do about it, but if we do nothing about it, we will be losing our muscle mass. If you're like, what does that have to do with healthy, independent aging? Would you like to be able to get off the toilet by yourself when you're 80? Would you like to be able to reach up into the cupboard and put pull a pot down? Would you like to be able to get on and off the ground? So if you're gardening or if you're like, you know, oh, I dropped my pencil, I need to get back down there. If we lose our muscle, we will not be able to do those things later in life. And then muscle is critical for aesthetics. And I know this is on a lot of people's mind. A lot of people have fat loss goals for aesthetic purposes, and there's nothing wrong with that. It is important to know that you cannot just diet yourself fit. Lean and tone is not just fat loss. It's fat loss plus muscle building. And I have been there myself. After those two pictures I just showed you, I don't have this picture up, but right as I turned 40, I did Nutrisystem and I lost a ton of weight, like 40 pounds plus. I, I gained most of it back very quickly. But in the interim, when I got down to what was my goal weight, I had a moment and I remember it so well. I looked in the mirror and I'm like, this can't be right. This, this is this is not what I'm supposed to look like. Like, why don't I have, why do my arms not look toned? Like, what is the problem? The missing piece was I had not only not built muscle, I had lost muscle. I was not eating a high protein diet and I was not strength training. And so as I had lost fat, I lost muscle. And though I got to my goal weight, I was not happy with how I look. This picture of me here was not just me losing lots and lots and lots of weight. This is also me building sub substantial muscle. Okay, so that's role one of exercise and fat loss is to spare your muscle. Role two is to widen your deficit, not fully create it, but to widen your deficit. Now for this part of our discussion, I actually wanna take the word exercise out and put activity here. The reason being, remember when I showed you the scale, we talked, this is another depiction of what I showed you on that scale. So all together, this is your calories out. This is your total daily energy expenditure. This big part at the bottom, your BMR, that's all those things to keep you alive. That's most of it. Then we have the thermic effect of food. That's this part here, this 10%. That's you using calories to um, digest your food. The rest, the little 5% at the top and this kind of part here, that's activity. We have exercise activity thermogenesis and non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Unless there's any professional athletes on this call, which I'm gonna guess there's not, no matter how much exercise we're doing as a typical regular person, it's still only gonna be at most 5% of our total daily energy expenditure. And none of us are really spending hours and hours in the gym, right? Here though, we have a space, an opportunity to actually widen our deficit. And that is with our non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Because anytime we're not sleeping or in the gym, we have an opportunity to increase this. That's a lot of hours in a week. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis, NEAT, those are all of the calories your body uses doing activities outside of structured exercise. So I talked about how it could be things as simple as like fidgeting. It's just daily life. I'm drying my hair. I'm at the grocery store. I'm walking the dog. All of these things. And this varies greatly person to person because some of us are very sedentary and some of us are more active. And so when we take an opportunity to make ourselves more active, we can widen our calorie deficit across our daily life without needing to like go to the gym or put on special shoes or anything like that. You are likely not moving as much as you once did. This is what the research shows us, that we are most likely not moving as much as we did when we were younger. So this is an opportunity we have, ladies, and we're going to talk about how to take advantage of that a little bit later in our discussion. And then the third role of exercise and fat loss is to make weight maintenance possible. Now, I'm going to guess that there's no one on this call who is just interested in just losing weight, right? Nobody's like, I'm fine if I gain it all back in two months. 
No, none of us want that. In fact, women of our age are really sick of that. We do not just want to lose weight to gain it all back. We've been there and done that a lot of us multiple times. We want to lose weight and keep it off. And that's one of the things that exercise can help with. Successful weight loss maintainers, those who maintain their exercise, rely on physical activity to remain in an energy balance rather than chronic restriction of dietary intake to avoid weight regain. Active people keep their weight off. And so as you are losing your weight through your nutrition, you want to build an active lifestyle through both exercise and that non-exercise activity thermogenesis so that when you get to the point where you're just worried about maintaining your weight, you are highly active and more likely to maintain your lost weight. Keep moving, get moving and keep moving. That's the third role of exercise in fat loss. Okay. With this idea in mind now, we know what exercise can do for us in terms of fat loss. Let's talk about what types of exercise we should be participating in. Let's talk about the core four exercise priorities. If you want to lose weight, transform your body, boost your metabolic health, and age with vitality. With that as our basis, what should we be doing? Let's start off with number one. We're going to start off with a bang, resistance training. Now, resistance training, you might think of it in terms of weightlifting or um, people call it lots of different things. Resistance training is lifting weights. Lots of styles of doing it. We want to be training with weights three to four times per week. You can use multiple modalities, kettlebells, dumbbells, barbells, machines, to a much lesser extent, body weight and bands. Body weight and bands can be a small part of it, but I would not rely on that. It's not going to get you the results you're looking for. So you can use multiple modalities. You want to train three to four times per week. You want to hit 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week. And you want to work close enough to failure, one to three reps away from failure. And if you're like, I don't know what that means. I'm going to explain that a little bit more in just a couple of slides. This is piece one of your training priorities is resistance training in this way, three to four times a week, 10 to 20 sets per muscle group, working close enough to failure. This is bringing us to biggest mistake number two that I see with women and exercise. And that is either they're not resistance training at all, or, and this is a big bunch of you, you're resistance training ineffectively. And I was once there too, resistance training ineffectively. What does that look like? Well, a couple of things, not having a structured plan. You do a little of this and a little of that. And frankly, movement of any kind is valuable. It is valuable to our health. It is not necessarily going to get you a specific goal like retaining your muscle in a fat loss phase, looking lean and toned, those kinds of things. You need a more structured plan rather than just general movement to reach those goals. So that's a big mistake is not using a structured plan. Another piece of resistance training ineffectively is changing up your plan too frequently. We see this a lot in um, like group fitness classes. You do one thing one week and you do a different thing the next time and then a different thing the next time. We also see this just with individuals who are like, oh, I'm just gonna do this workout on YouTube this week and I'm gonna grab this little free workout I found on Pinterest the next week. So we're changing up the plan too frequently. The third mistake people are waking, making in terms of resistance training ineffectively is that the focus in the resistance training is on burning calories in that session making themselves sore and making themselves tired. So people are like, I got to keep my heart rate up. I got to feel sore. I got to feel tired. And this is actually not leading to the adaptations your body needs to make in a resistance training session. And then the fourth piece that I so often see with resistance training ineffectively is not working with intensity and progression. And this comes back to what I had just mentioned about working close enough to failure. So let's talk a little bit more about what that even means. A successful progressive resistance training program, one that ends with you looking fit and ends with you preserving your muscle mass, mass is going to focus on getting stronger over time. Week to week, you are lifting heavier weight or you're being able to do more reps with the same weight in a given rep range following a well-designed training program. You train with intensity. Again, that's not, you hear that word intensity and you might think like, I'm flailing around and there's sweat dripping off of me and I'm burning a lot of calories. 
That is not what I mean. I'm talking about lifting heavy for you. It is not a certain number. It is, um, it varies person to person. Lifting heavy enough for you, leaving one to three reps left in your tank, which would look something like this. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say that I have a weight in my hand right now and I'm doing a single arm dumbbell overhead press. How a lot of people might do that is like, okay, my training program says to do eight reps. So I've gotten to five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm going to stop. And if I thought about it, I could go on to nine, 10. I could probably do 15 reps. That is not lifting close enough to failure. What it should like at the end of every single set, not at the end of your workout, but at the end of every single set, let's do that same exercise again. I've picked up a heavier weight. I'm on rep four. I'm on rep five. I'm on rep six. It's getting really hard. Rep seven. I had to really work to get it up. Rep eight. I got it. You can see how I'm slowing down. It's very challenging. I should know that I could get one more rep for sure with good form, maybe two, possibly three. I really like to shy away from having people go as far as three because it's hard to gauge. They're like, I don't know, is it three, is it five? But really getting one to two reps away from failure, you're going to know that you are training hard enough. Does that make sense? It's a very different way of training for most people. Most people, like they pick up a weight and they're like, it says to do it eight times, 10 times, 12 times, and I do it that much. Or they're trying to pace themselves to make it to the end of the workout. You need to take each set as it comes and push hard each set. This is a really big opportunity for you listening to really get the gains that have, you have left on the table. This is one of those areas where so many women are like, oh, that's the missing piece for me. I want you to pause and evaluate your current resistance training program. Is it following these guidelines? When you just thought through that, was there anything there that you're like, ooh, that's me, that's me. All right, so that's piece one is the resistance training three to four times a week with progression and proper intensity. Training priority number two is moving 7,500 to 12,000 steps daily. This is where we have that opportunity for growth I talked to you about, about increasing our NEAT. Now, technically, when we pay attention to it, it's not non-exercise activity thermogenesis because now we're actively using our step tracker to do it, but it all adds up to the same thing, which is moving more throughout our day. The bulk of the health benefits of increasing steps accrue by 7,500 steps. That's what the research shows us. Like you're going to get most of the health benefits if you get up to 7,500 steps. What I have found in coaching hundreds and hundreds of women is that 10 to 12,000 steps is beneficial for fat loss without being lifestyle prohibitive, which doesn't mean you have to get there right now, but it's a good goal to shoot for if fat loss is your goal to get somewhere 10 to 12,000 steps. I find that most people can do that even if they have an office job without it really being like, this is what I spend all my time doing. Anything over 12,000 steps, unless you're a person who has a naturally active job, it can be really hard. But 10 to 12,000 steps is actually very doable with time and with practice. These two are where to focus first if fat loss is your main goal. Resistance training, moving 7,500 to 12,000 steps daily. Remember, fat loss means prioritizing nutrition. That takes time, energy and effort. Time, energy, and effort. You can get amazing fat loss results with just those two training priorities. Resistance training, move 7,500 to 12,000 steps a day. And of course, you've got to have the calorie deficit piece to lose the fat. I'm going to show you two people because I want you to see what can be done with just those two pieces of the training puzzle and the calorie deficit. This is That's all they did to get these results. This is Rhonda. She's a 57-year-old, single mom of four, grandma to six. She joined Fitter After 40, This that, which is my program. If you're like, what's that? That's my program. She joined it this time last year. She has lost 69 pounds, 60 inches, and five sizes doing those three things. Calorie deficit, walking 7,500 to 12,000 steps daily, and resistance training. Did I say that already? This is what she, Rhonda had to say. After 20 years of not sleeping through the night, I'm consistently getting seven to eight hours of sleep each night, and I'm strong. Before FAF, or after 40, I could not carry in the 40-pound bag of dog food without stopping. I had no strength or energy. I can easily carry that dog food now. Amazing. Those three priorities, that's what she focused on. 
Same thing with Treva. Treva is a 53 year old empty nester. She learned how to play guitar in her 50s, which I think is super cool. She joined Fitter After 40 back in its very first year, back in 2021. Not only did Treva lose 30 pounds in six months, she went from being able to do zero push ups to being able to do 15 push ups. And they were beautiful, beautiful, pristine push ups. Again, she did it in the same way resistance training three to four times per week, increasing her daily movement, increasing her steps up to that seven to 12,000 step range. And of course, being in a calorie deficit. Once you have those things dialed, nutrition steps and resistance training, you're really successfully losing fat, you're building muscle, then we can add in two more vital training priorities. These are important, but they are not the big dial movers for fat loss, okay? That's the key here. One being cardio. The physical activity guidelines for Americans, which I know there are those of you here in Canada and other countries, other uh, health organizations also have similar guidelines. 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity cardio per week or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity cardio per week or some combination of the two. You don't have to do both of those. One, the other, or a combo of the two. Amazing benefits from doing cardio. Amazing. You live longer, better heart health. Bone health, especially when you do some high impact cardio, can really impact your bone health positively and improves your metabolic health. Cardio is very compatible with fat loss goals, but so often it is misplaced in priority order. People think, I want to lose weight, cardio, and that's where they put their energy and effort. If fat loss is your main goal and you're inconsistent with your calories, your protein, and your resistance training, dedicate time and energy there first, then come back and add in cardio. And then let's talk about the last of the core four training priorities, and that is power training. Power is the ability to produce force quickly. Our power output declines with age, and in fact, this ability declines faster and earlier than muscular strength. We need power to be able to react quickly to help us if we start to fall and to perform daily living tasks, like getting off the couch and going up steps. We need, if you have ever seen an old person trying to get off, off the couch and they're having to like really, like really work for it, it's because they've lost muscular power. And we don't have to lose our muscular power. We can train not to. How do we do that? This is what power training looks like. Power training should be done with explosiveness. It should be done when fresh. So I program this for my Fitter After 40 alumni members after their warm up, but before their strength training. So they're super fresh. Here are some exercises you can do to train power jump squats, ball slams, broad jumps, power cleans, depth jumps, kettlebell swings wall balls, and jump lunges. And if you're like, hey, I've done some of those, it's highly likely you haven't done them to train power. Maybe some of you have, but a lot of the times when we see these exercises being done, they're being done uh, more for metabolic conditioning. You're doing a lot of them very fast. For power training, we do fewer reps. So when I program these, it's like five or six reps with break in between. So we would do like a jump squat, trying to generate as much power, as much force high as we can. Stop, reset, and do it again. The goal with each and every rep is to produce as much power as possible. And that's how we train power. It's exciting stuff. Those are the core four training priorities. Now, how is this different then for women over, over 40 versus women under 40? Are you like, wait, what's up with them? Women under 40 should absolutely be training in these four same ways. The reality is that most of them are not. They're not. Only 24.2% of adults over the age of 18 are meeting the physical activity guidelines for Americans. That is less than a quarter. So most women under 40 are not training this way. Most women over 40 aren't training this way. We do not have the luxury of saying, I'll get to that later. Later's now, ladies. This is later. <laughs> there's there's no later. Later is now. If you are doing nothing to prevent it, you are losing bone, you are losing muscle, and you are losing muscular power. Now is the time. One other way that this type of training is different for women over 40 than for women under 40 is you may be experiencing menopause symptoms. Some that directly impact exercise are joint pain, fatigue, and increased anxiety and depression. So it's important, I would actually say critical, 
that we find a way to train around those symptoms, not through them, not ignoring them, but we find a way to help you train around them. We make your training adaptable to how you're feeling on any given day while you continue trying to work with your healthcare team to mitigate those symptoms, which sometimes happens and it sometimes takes a long time or doesn't happen at all. But in any case, we can help you work around these symptoms so you can get really great results. Yes, even in the throes of menopause and perimenopause. Now, you know, ladies, you know the core four training priorities for fat loss and fitness over 40. Now, if you're listening to that and you're like, okay, now how do I do all of that? How do I do it? I want you to give me, give me a thumbs up if you've ever thought like, it's, it's too late for me. I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm too out of shape. I'm nervous. I can't do it. It would be very normal if those are thoughts that cross your mind. That is a very, very normal thing to think about. Give me a thumbs up. Are you like, yeah, that's me. Like sometimes I think like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I'm not sure. Can I do it? Behavior change research shows us that seeing others who are similar to ourselves achieve a goal that we would like to succeed at actually increases our belief in our ability to achieve that goal. So let's get you believing that you, as a woman in midlife, can achieve the fitness that you would like to. I'm going to show you a couple of women who I have worked with in recent years who've achieved exactly these things. This is Trina. She joined Fitter after 40. She was 48. Well, she is 48. She was I guess 46 when she joined. She's 48. She's a business owner. She's a breast cancer survivor. She's a grandma of three and an avid camper. She lost 35 pounds and went from a size 17 to a size eight. She has more energy, better mood, and is sleeping amazing. This is Kim. Well, technically it's not Kim. Kim was super cute. She's like, I absolutely would love to tell people about the progress I've made and be willing to inspire people, but I'm camera size. So she's like, can you find a picture of somebody who looks just like me? So this is Kim. Kim is a Fitter After 40 fall alumni from this past fall. She just joined us. She's a 54-year-old busy university professor. This is what she said. She said, I joined Fitter After 40 when I was at my highest weight ever. And during my busiest time at work, I was tired of feeling awful. I lost over 20 pounds eating more calories than I thought I could eat. And more importantly, I gained sustainable habits. Over the holiday break, I didn't track calories or deny the food that makes the holiday season fun. However, I continued a couple of mini habits and was shocked to see that I maintained my weight. This is the first new year. I'm not searching for a cleanse or radical diet to jumpstart weight loss. How incredible is that? This is Sharon. She's 58 years old. She's an operation manager for a memorial firm. She's a mom of three. She loves concerts and travel. And she joined Fitter After 40 last spring as well. She lost 14 pounds and 17 inches. She says everything's down. I'm down a clothing size, blood pressure is down, my resting heart rate is down. Amazing, amazing. And then the last I want to show you, this is Shanna. Shanna's a 44-year-old mom of three. She loves live sporting events. She joined Fitter After 40 this time last year. She lost 30 pounds and 31 inches. And I love what she has to say here. She says, I am regaining my health after early menopause hit me hard. Now I feel more and more like myself every day. This is something I hear from a lot of women and might resonate with you as well. They're like, I just, I don't feel like myself. I don't feel like myself with the level of fitness I currently have. I want to ask you two questions. Question number one, what would you do if you were in shape right now? What is one thing you would do if you're like, I did it. I lost the weight. I got as fit as I wanted to be. What's one thing you would do? Drop into the chat and tell me. While you do that, I want to tell you about Paula. Paula joined Fitter After 40 in the fall of 2021. She lost 30 pounds and she did something she hadn't done in over 15 years. She went skiing and she said, I was able to do that because I realized I'd gotten strong enough that I could handle it and do it safely. And she had a fabulous time skiing. And then she came home and said to her husband, she's like, now I think I'm ready to take dance classes. So what's one thing you would do if you were in shape right now? M. Peter says, dance more often, go to the beach, not worry about what to wear, hiking. Awesome. I love it. I love it. One more question for you, ladies. Would you like me to help you to be able to do those things? Would you like me to be able to help you to lose pounds and inches and sizes to create that fitter version of you as simply and enjoyably as possible? If so, I would like to invite you inside Fitter After 40. Right now, you have two options. 
Option number one, you can take the things you've learned here today and you can work to put together an exercise and nutrition program without a step-by-step -step plan. You have some good information, but you're going to run the big risk of being in the exact same place this time next year. Option number two, you can 100% commit to learning how to implement the information you learned here today to lose weight and build the habits to keep it off for good using a proven roadmap. If you're like, I want option number two, give me the roadmap. Give me the roadmap. Fitter After 40 is that roadmap. Fitter After 40 is the only online client training of its kind that shows you exactly how to consistently implement the exercise, nutrition, and mindset strategies that will make you stronger and leaner for life while freeing you from constantly thinking about your weight. We've talked today about a lot of information, but information does not get you results. Implementation and action gets you results. And that's what we'll do together inside Fitter After 40. We will get you acting on these things. I will help you set up your personalized nutrition plan so you know exactly what and how much to eat. You will get to follow a progressive six-week workout plan, just like I described to you earlier about needing a plan that was well-structured and helped you train close to failure. I will be holding your hand and teaching you exactly how to do that and giving you the plan to do that workout. You're going to be able to implement a system for increasing your consistency with nutrition and training. So if you're like, oh, I struggle to stick with some things, I got you covered here. You're going to master two habits that will make weight loss easier and help you keep weight off permanently. And you're going to manage the roadblocks that perimenopause, menopause, and midlife throw in the way of weight loss. You're including sleep. We're going to work on improving your sleep quantity and quality and learn how to reduce the impact of lack of sleep on your weight loss progress. And you're going to learn my three-step process for overcoming stress eating and emotional eating. There are eight implementation modules inside Fitter After 40. Again, this is not about, this is not an information download. I try to give you as little information as you need while giving you as much opportunity to act on it as possible. That's what we do in these eight modules. We start off week one, we spend two full weeks working on your nutrition. I help give you the plan that you need to follow to lose weight via your nutrition. I'm not giving you a meal plan. I'm gonna help you create a personalized meal plan so that it's gonna fit into your life and you actually enjoy the way you eat. Then we work on your exercise. We get you training close to failure and training for strength, training for progressive overload. Then we introduce two habits that are gonna help you maintain your weight long-term and just make weight loss generally easier. Then I'm going to show you a framework to approach any hurdle you have when it comes to weight loss, specifically hurdles to weight loss in midlife and menopause. And then we're going to hit those some of those big hurdles one at a time. What do we do about when we're not sleeping well? What do we do about all of our emotional eating, our stress eating? And what do we do about the fact that we just do not seem to have enough time? There's never enough time. I'm going to help you get yourself at the top of your priority list. And then lastly, something that a lot, I'm going to go most weight loss programs leave out is how do you maintain the weight you have lost? We have a whole module on maintaining your lost weight. All of this together is a value of $1,997. For all eight training modules, the videos, the PDF guides, the checklist, the templates, and that six weeks training to strength training program, which by the way, comes with videos of me performing every single exercise. You're not going to know, like, I don't know how to do this. I'm going to show you how to do it. All of that together is a value of $1,997, but it would not be an amazing program unless I gave you a couple of bonuses. And I have three bonuses for you. Bonus number one are eight live Zoom coaching calls with me and your fellow Fitter After 40 students. That's one call per week. I do record them in case you can't make it live. On these calls, this is when we dig into what are the hurdles you have? What has held you back from losing weight in the past? How are you self-sabotaging yourself? You and I will talk through this and you'll get the benefit of watching me talk through with someone else a similar problem that you have. That's a $792 value for those eight live calls. I want you to know I'm not extra special. I did not have ex access to exclusive experts or technology or resources when I got my own results. In fact, I fumbled around in the dark wasting time and money. And I do not want that for you. I don't want you wasting time and money. I have a proven roadmap for you. I use it with every single one of my Fitter After 40 members, and I'm going to teach it to you inside Fitter After 40. So bonus number one are those eight live Zoom coaching calls. Bonus number two, Dr. Heather Hirsch, she's the founder and director of the Menopause and Midlife Clinic at Brigham 
she's a former director. She's not there anymore. You may have seen her on Oprah last year. She was on a big Oprah special. She recorded a module specific for my course. It's a specific module all about your hormonal and non-hormonal treatment options for your menopause symptoms. That's a $350 value. Now, there is a risk-free guarantee to joining Fitter After 40. If you do everything I ask for eight weeks and you do not think it was worth it, I will gladly give you a full refund. Don't come to me week two and be like, mm, mm, I want my money back because I'm not here for your self-sabotage. I'm here to actually help you get past self-sabotage. But if you make it through all eight weeks, you do the things I ask and you're like, I didn't get any results. I will give you your money back. Every last cent of it. Bonus number three. We've got those eight live Zoom coaching calls. We've got Dr. Hirsch's training. And bonus number three, losing weight is really hard if you don't change your environment. And so I'm going to help you change your environment by helping you have a community around you who are on the same path as you. We have a private online community and an intimately sized accountability pods. So you have people to hold your feet to the fire with the promises you make to yourself. And that's a $225 value. So for the complete Fitter After 40 program with all three bonuses, that is a $3,364 value. I am not going to be charging $3,364. In fact, one of the main reasons I created Fitter After 40 as a group program was to help to make the cost more accessible versus my one-on-one -on -one coaching that I used to do. And so I'm only charging $499 for the entire Fitter After 40 program plus all three bonuses. And in fact, I do have a two pay option, which means you can start today for just $257. Doors are open right now. Andrew's going to drop into the chat the link. You can join right now. You can choose either of these payment options. She also popped up this handy dandy QR code here. If you're like, oh, I'm a QR kind of gal, you can click right there and head right on over to the Fitter After 40 cart. It is open right now. Now, if you're like, I definitely want to join, if you join while we are still live here on the call, remember, we're going to do that Q&A, so I'm still going to be here chatting for a few minutes now. If you join while we are still live here on the call, you're going to get one of those live one-on-one -on -one personal training sessions with me. You and I will hop on a call together on Zoom, and we will work through one of these things that you would like. Do you want me to help you with your form on some exercises? Do you want an individualized strategy session? Do you want me to look at the equipment you have and what you've been doing? We will do that together, just you and I. It's literally one-on-one. -on -one. If you sign up before the end of the call today, you will get this never-before-offered fast action bonus. So go ahead on over to fitterafter40 at mykajabi.com. Andrea has the link in the chat. Also, you can use this QR code. When you get there, this is what you're going to see. You're going to scroll down about a quarter of the way down. You're going to see these options right here. The two pay option, the one pay option. There's also a VIP experience that has very limited um, quantities, but there are some available there. You're going to click on whichever feels like the best fit for you. It'll bring you to this screen. It's going to take you less than three minutes to fill this all out. Less than three minutes. And then we're going to take a minute and we're going to celebrate you for investing in yourself, betting on yourself. Then give me just a minute, head on over to your email. You'll find your login credentials for my members por portal. You'll sign in there with those credentials and it'll take you up here to your library. When you click on it, you're going to find Fitter After 40. There's a welcome video in there waiting for you, telling you first steps right now today. You can start on your transformation literally right now. So head on over to kimshlogfitness.mikeajabi.com backslash Fitter After 40. Now, I know you showed up here today for a specific reason, even though you're incredibly busy. You didn't show up here just for the fun of it, right? Maybe you came because you feel stuck. Like you're not thrilled with your progress you're making. You're like, ah, I don't know what my next best move is here today. Or maybe you're tired of starting and stopping. You're tired of knowing what to do, but not knowing how to stick with it long enough to see results. Or maybe you just want more. You want more vibrance, more health, more opportunity, more independence when you're older, more confidence, more say over how you age. But maybe you still have some doubts. You want to lose weight, but maybe you're worried you won't stick with it. I have baked into Fitter After 40 the tools, the strategies, and the supports that are going to help you shift your mindset so you do stick with it this time. If you're a person you're like, mm, I stand up for stuff and I don't do it, most other coaches and other programs, very few, not that there's none because I certainly know of some, most other programs that offer weight loss do not tackle the part where they shift your mindset about your self-limiting beliefs. 
we're going to do that. So you do stick with it. Lots of tools in there to help you do that. Maybe the worry you have in your mind is like, mm, I don't want to do this, but I'm really busy. I am literally going to help you create more time and get yourself on your own priority list. No one else is going to do this for you. There's never going to be a good time. There's always going to be a reason why you just feel so busy. What do we do to help you change your fixed mindset around time and get yourself moved up on your priority list? That's what we're going to do together. Maybe your concern is, I'm just too out of shape. I don't think I could do this. Or maybe you think I'm too advanced. The entire Fitter After 40 program is designed to meet you where you are with nutrition and exercise. Your nutrition targets are based on your current habits. Your step targets are based on your current activity level. Your workouts are all scalable to you. So if you're worried, oh, I'm not going to be able to keep up, I promise you, you are because I'm going to meet you where you are. And if on the other side, you're like, I have a lot of knowledge about fitness. Like, I don't know. Why would I need this? If you're not getting the results that you want, it's not knowledge you're lacking. It is insight into what is holding you back. It's like when you have lettuce in your teeth and you're like, I don't have a mirror. I can't see it. You need somebody to show you that lettuce. That's what I'm going to help those of you who are like, I have a lot of knowledge, but it's just not working. That's what I'm going to help you do inside Fitter After 40. So head on over now. Doors are open right now. If you join while we're still live here on the call, you're going to be able to grab that fast action bonus. All right, I'm going to grab my phone and I'm going to head on over to the chat here and look at the questions that y'all have left. Shannon says, how many reps per set is ideal? Shannon, ideally you'll be working in multiple rep ranges. This is how your program should look. You should not always train in the same rep range. And it's a problem that you see with a lot of workouts. It will say you do three or four sets, always 10 reps or 12 reps or 15 reps, whatever it is. Typically it's higher reps. Ideally, you'll be training in all rep ranges. So the Fitter After 40 program, you have some exercises at the beginning of your workout that are in a lower rep range that like five, six, I don't even know if I go down to five and Fitter After 40, but right around in that six rep range. And then the middle of part of your workout, you're in that like eight to 10 rep range. And then in the, the end of your workout, you're working more in that 12 to 15 rep range. So multiple rep ranges. What research shows us is that we can build muscle across all rep ranges. We up to a certain point, you can't just go indefinitely, but up to a certain point. And so we want to work across all of those varying rep ranges to get the best results possible. Heather says, how much time between sets? So research suggests that more time is better, uh, not indefinitely, but two minutes is a really good time to shoot for. If you're like, what? That feels like forever. And I don't need that amount of time. You're likely not pushing yourself hard enough with your weights. Pick up a heavier weight and I promise you, you will need those two minutes. It doesn't have to be two minutes, but definitely I would not go less than a minute. One minute to two minutes is a really great time between sets. So what do you do during that time? Okay, what you don't do is like high knees, jumping jacks, running around. You can, one really great thing to do is to film yourself while you're doing your workout and then review the footage during your break. So you can see like, oh wait, my arm was actually supposed to be in this other position and I have it here. I'll adjust that. You can have a water break. You can um, uh, take a little stroll. And I don't mean like, get your heart racing kind of stroll. I mean, just strolling around. The, it's a really great place actually to add in a lot of steps in a day is if you take your two minute breaks while you slowly pace. So two minutes between sets is a really great place to be. 90 seconds to two minutes is typically where I fall with my programming. Delinda, hello. She says, best way to switch from priorities, prioritizing cardio to weights. Cardio is such a great mental boost for me. So Delinda, there's nothing wrong with doing cardio. However, if your goal is fat loss, the way to switch from prioritizing it is to literally talk back to your brain and say, brain, what I need to lose weight is to prioritize my nutrition first. So before I go off and do another 30 minute session on the elliptical, I'm going to ask myself, have I pre-logged my food for tomorrow? Do I um, know what I'm eating tomorrow? Do I have that food here in my house? Have I um, have I strength trained yet this week? If not, when am I doing it? Should I do that instead? So you talk back to your brain and say like, I need to get these things done. I need to hit my calories. 
I need to hit my protein. I need to get my steps in, which can be done with via cardio, right? But it doesn't have to be cardio. So am I doing those things? If I'm not, I'm not actually serving myself. And then Delinda, I'm not saying cut out the cardio. If you have the time, energy, and effort to do the cardio while you're still getting in your strength training and prioritizing that nutrition, absolutely keep it in. You don't have to get rid of it. But if it's taking time away and you're saying in your brain, like, I don't have time to meal prep. I don't have time to plan my meals. I don't have time to log my food. And you're frustrated that you're not seeing fat loss results. That's when you need to have a chat with your brain and be like, brain, I know you're telling me I want to do the cardio, but I want to lose weight. And so I have to do these other things. Actually, that's the wrong wording. Not I have to. I'm choosing to do these other things first, and then I'll find some time for cardio when I can. That's a really good question, Delinda. Let's see. M. Peter says, how do I get over a plateau? I don't think I can increase my calorie deficit. So it's a really good question. I would need to see what exactly you're doing to advise you here. There's a couple of really good options. Option number one. You are actually not in a plateau. It's a normal part of the process. And I see this a lot. I see it a lot. People are thinking it's a plateau, but really they have unrealistic expectations for what weight loss progress looks like. So that would be one possibility. Um, if you are still here, M, I'm sorry, I don't know your actual name. It looks like a handle, M-P-E-T-R, M-Peter. If you're still here, drop into the chat and tell me how, how much weight are you looking to lose? Because that's going to really impact the answer to this question. If you're in a plateau, are you talking you've got 5, 10 pounds to lose? Are you talking you're trying to lose 50 pounds? Give me some more information there and I can answer that better if you're still here. I'm going to open the chat up so I can see. Uh, 10 kilograms. Okay. Hold, please. I can't think in terms of kilograms. I got to do my math. 10 times 2.2. Okay. So 22 pounds. Okay. So that's enough weight. Um, so likely there's a couple of things. So whenever I walk someone through going through a plateau, the reason I, it makes a difference with how much weight you have to lose. If somebody has five pounds to lose, oftentimes the scale doesn't actually move. It's just, they lose inches and they look different. And that's more for like a five pound weight loss. If you have 22 pounds to lose, the scale will be coming down if you're losing fat. So if you're not losing fat, before we would say, yeah, that person's in a plateau, I'm gonna be really straight with you here. Very few people are actually in a plateau when they think. It's usually a matter of their adherence. And so we wanna look really carefully. And this is one of the things we do in Fitter After 40. I have an electronic tool that actually allows you to see at a glance what your consistency has been over the course of a week or a month. And then people are like, what? Because to get really good, <clears throat> excuse me, to get really good fat loss results, you want to be at 80% consistency with hitting your calories. And that is really hard to do. It's like, tw I want to say it's 23 out of 28 days. You have to be on target with your calories. Well, I mean, you can't even like go off track every weekend and have it be that many days. So it's often a matter of you're going off track more than you think. And so really keeping track of what your consistency is and then dialing in where is that inconsistency. For a lot of people, the inconsistency is weekends, nighttime overeating, eating out at restaurants, not using a scale to track their food, but eyeballing, um, snick snacking throughout the day, like little licks, bites, and tastes that aren't logged. And there's lots we can do to help with all of those. We spend a lot of time in Fitter After 40 working through these kinds of things. And I get my eyes on what people are doing and help ask the right questions so we can figure out, wait, where are these extra calories coming in? And then we get weight loss moving again. I hope that helps. Ideal average pounds lost per week in the program. That's a great question. It's going to depend on how much weight someone has to lose. We're looking at a minimum of a half a pound per week. I'm not going to give a maximum. But half a pound per week to two pounds per week on average for weight loss, I've had many women who have a lot of weight left to, to lose who've lost far more than two pounds per week in Fitter After 40. But typically what we're looking at is half a pound per week to two pounds per week, which means over the eight weeks of Fitter After 40, if you lose, um, now all of a sudden I can't do math, half a pound per week, that's four pounds, <laughs> sorry, after eight weeks, four pounds to 16 pounds, you're doing really, really well. And that's not just with my program. 
but just generally when you're looking to lose weight looking to lose half a pound to two pounds per week do not just hear the two pounds ladies don't just hear that because everyone's like i want to lose two pounds per week that's only going to apply to you if you have a lot of weight to lose if you're like i have 20 pounds to lose 25 pounds to lose you're going to be close to that half to one pound per week weight loss Um, do most people stay on fit or after 40 program indefinitely or more of a short-term group? It really depends. So we have, um, women who are still in the group three years later because we don't just work on weight loss. We work on weight loss and maintenance and getting strong and building a lifestyle. And a lot of these women now really enjoy fitness and they support one another. They've become really good friends. We had one of our accountability pods. They all just went to visit each other in Florida. Um, a whole, like five of them went to see each other there. Um, so it's a big community that we have built of women who enjoy being active and they support each other through the ups and downs of not only their fitness, but just life in general and what's happening in midlife. And so plenty of people join Fitter After 40. They stay with me for eight weeks and they're like, I'm good to go. But then a lot of women stay with me in my monthly membership that's only available to the alumni of Fitter After 40. Uh, and they stay with me month to month because they like having somebody be like, here is your new workout. And they always have me in their back pocket to ask a question and, hey, like, I'm going on this big hike. Like, what should my nutrition be for this big hike and those kinds of things. So I have a lot of the women who stay with me for a very long time. Sarah Lacey Reese, welcome to Fitter After 40. I'm excited you just joined us. Congratulations. I'm excited you're in here. Um, when do modules begin? The very first module is going to be available this Friday, which isn't the official start date, but this Friday, you're going to be able to get the module on nutrition. We then start our kickoff date is next Monday, and we're going to spend eight weeks together. The first two weeks are going to be all about your nutrition. We are going to hit nutrition hard. We are going to help you practice all of the things about nutrition. It's going to be such an eye-opening experience for how you've been eating, and we're going to help you get started making the moves you need to make with your nutrition to build your own individualized meal plan so that you are losing weight in a way that feels really good and really comfortable to you. So yeah, we have our first kickoff call next Monday and this Friday is when the very first module becomes available. Can your program be completed at home with dumbbells? I have five to 40. That is a great setup. Five to 40 pound dumbbells, absolutely. You can do, that's what the main piece of equipment you need to do this workout program is going to be heavy enough dumbbells. So we start with lighter dumbbells. We want you to have a range of dumbbells. Gym access is awesome. I'm not going to say it's 50-50, but we have a lot of women who do Fitter After 40 from home, and we have a lot of fit women who do Fitter After 40 from the gym. Both options are available. I have, if you do not have a gym, you do not need a gym to do Fitter After 40. You do need weights, ideally a bench that can incline and decline, and then Chin-up assist bands. Don't worry, I'm not throwing you into chin-ups, but chin-up assist bands are those long loop bands. They look like big circles, not the little tiny ones, but the long ones. We take those and we use them in combination with something like an over-the-door chin-up bar, or if you have like an exposed beam in your basement, you're gonna hook these over, these bands over, and then you're gonna be able to simulate what they have in the gym for like a lat pull-down so we can work all those big, beautiful back muscles you have back there. Michaela says, Oh, Mihaela. Awesome. Um, I believe I answered your question. I just missed that part where you told me your name. So you have about 10 kilograms. Yeah, I believe. Let me know if I didn't answer your question, Mihaela, but I believe I did. Um, so yes, you can absolutely work out at home. Dumbbells, those long loop bands, and ideally a bench that can incline and decline um, would be the equipment you would have at home. But if you just had the bands and the dumbbells, you'd be good. Um, like I said, we have plenty of the women who train at home and we have plenty who train in the gym. All right. I think I've gotten to the end of the question. Let me think. Uh, Jen says, how much time daily will this program take? It's a really good question. I want you to think in terms, if you're like, I am really busy. I want you to think now about how much time you spend thinking about your weight, being on social media or Google, being like, how do I lose weight? What diet should I do, right? Like how much time are you spending and mental energy are you spending on this? I'm going to take care of all of that for you. I'm gonna take 
all of that off of your plate. You're not going to have to spend any time on that. I'm going to give you the plan and then I'm going to help you to do it in the most time efficient way possible. I want you to think about investing in Fitter After 40 as saving yourself time, time, energy, and money. I'm about saving you all of those things because you're not going to have to ever again wonder like, how do I actually do this? Like, I don't know what to do next. Should I try this? Should I try that? Throwing my money after this thing or that thing. I'm going to help you understand exactly how weight loss works for you. And you're never going to have to be left in the dark again. But um, specifically, I do want to give you some numbers. If you're like, that didn't answer my question. I'm going to give you some specific numbers. Well, let me look up. I do have this jotted down in case somebody asks. So the actual modules themselves, they're very user-friendly in terms of I've broken them up into little mini lessons. You get one module each week, except for week one and two, we, we do nutrition for two weeks. The rest of the time, we only spend one week on each thing, but nutrition is two weeks. And nutrition is the longest module, which is why we spend two weeks on it. And it's the hardest, right? It's hard, it's hard to change our eating. It's the longest module at 40 minutes, and they're broken up into these little mini lessons. And so it's 20 to 40 minutes per week on like that learning piece. So we're talking like three to six minutes a day. You can do it in one shot. You can do it across a couple of days. So very minimal time there. Practicing your nutrition habits takes longer in the beginning. And over time, it's really quick. Like over time, you're not going to have to really think about how to do these steps. It's kind of like when you start driving a car. You know how it's like really laborious. You're like, I have to put my key in here. And where do I put it into reverse? And how do I turn out of my driveway? And you're thinking. And so it takes long time and energy and effort. It's the same when you're starting a new nutrition program. There is that period where it feels like, oh, this is taking a lot of mental energy. It's taking more time. But in very short order, that becomes second nature, just like with driving a car. It just becomes second nature. Um, so in the beginning, maybe 10 to 15 minutes on your like pre-logging and those nutrition habits per day. But over time, we're talking like five minutes. Like you could literally do it while you're on the toilet. Um, and then the workouts themselves are going to be between 35 and 55 minutes per week. You get to choose. Do you want to do it three times a week or do you want to do it four times per week? One of those situations. So 35 to 55 minutes, three to four times per week. And then we have the coaching calls for one hour per week. You do not have to show up to every one if you're like, I can't do it. I find them very valuable. Not just me. The ladies who come find them very valuable. It's when we help you figure out why have I always struggled with X? What am I doing wrong with Y? What does my, why is my brain telling me this when I know that's not helpful? And how do I change to think something else? That's when we do all of that kind of deep work together. All right. Welcome to Fitter After 40, HLQs 1. I'm super excited. I'm super excited for you. Congratulations. I'm thrilled that you're going to be in here with us. I'm going to put your name up there with all of those other ladies. I don't know if you can see. There's already 22 ladies who joined during the, the waitlist pre-sale. I'm going to be putting your names up there very soon, ladies. Welcome to Fitter After 40. Those of you who are still here live, if you want to grab that special bonus, you've got just another minute or two before I hop off to join now. The doors are going to be open to join the spring round of Fitter After 40 until this Friday at 10 p.m. That's when the door shut. I open the doors twice per year. This is the only way to work with me right now. So if you've been like following along with me on my podcast or on Instagram and you're like, oh, I've, I've always wanted to have her help me, this is your shot. Uh, unless you want to wait six more months because I won't open up again until the fall. So if you're like, I really don't, I don't want to wait. I don't want to be in the same place that I am in right now when the fall comes. This is your chance. This week, join us. It's going to be a really supportive community that is going to help you reach the goals that you have been looking to reach. All right, everyone. I want to make sure I've hit these last couple of questions. I think I got them all. I'm going to do it one more scan, and then I'm going to hop off. It has been great to be here with you. Whether you join Fitter After 40 or not, I hope today's presentation was helpful. I hope it helped you understand the importance of exercise for fat loss, the importance of not looking at exercise as a way to just burn calories. I hope that it has helped you um, realize what has been missing from you being able to get results. I really hope that it has been useful for you, whether you choose to join Fitter After 40 or not. Always good to be with us. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for sacrificing eating the donut. Look, I love eating a donut, but it's kind of painful to eat it while you're trying to talk to a crowd of people on camera. Wearing a white jacket, that wasn't a good plan. <laughs> I was very nervous. I was going to get the chocolate icing on myself. All right, everyone. You are welcome, Delinda. You're welcome.
Bye, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Bye, everyone.